freedomtalkradio.co.uk. This is the most diverse, most amazing, one of the funniest radio stations you can ever listen to on the internet. I've heard so much stuff from the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, the politics, the non-politics, the schmalitics, whatever you want to call them. It's great. Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Freeze it. This... This isn't the Matrix. No. It's another training program designed to teach you one thing. If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. We have survived by hiding from them, by running from them. But they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. Someone? I won't lie to you, Neil. Every single man or woman who has stood their ground, everyone who has fought an agent has died. But where they have failed, you will succeed. Why? I've seen an agent punch through a concrete wall. Men have emptied entire clips at them and hit nothing but air. Yet their strength and their speed are still based in a world that is built on rules. Because of that, they will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. Hi, this is Tim Clark with End Times Matrix News. I'm coming to you today uh, with a phone going off, and I'm going to just uh, pause that for a second and disconnect that. That's one of these little glitches that's fun here. Nothing like dead air uh, with phones ringing in the background. That's you know, one of the things I forgot to do on my checklist is disconnect my phone while I'm doing the uh, broadcast here. Uh, this is End Times Matrix News. Uh, we're coming to you uh, live on uh, Tuesday, the 25th of uh, February. We're almost entering into March here where all the fireworks are starting to happen. Uh the goal of the show, of course, is like Morpheus was talking about in there, is to unplug yourself from the Matrix, this uh, false illusion that is this false reality that is uh, put in front of us to distract us from the things that really matter in life and uh, to get us sidetracked with all kinds of divisive, uh, time-consuming garbage to basically... Uh, keep us away from what we are here to do and what we are here to learn. And um, and we are in the end times now. So the, the, the an end of history as we know it is at the doorstep. We're right on the doorstep of that uh, period. And uh, the main thing to remember when you when you synthesize everything and you reduce everything right down to the core basics of reality is that this is a game of souls this is a game for your soul this is a game where the the, the forces that work with lucifer uh, satan 
are trying to deceive you into uh, a, a sleep, trying to keep you in a slumber, to keep you involved in things that have nothing to do with you, the eternal destiny of your soul. So here on End Times Matrix uh, News, we come at you with a worldview that is a basic Christian worldview. Uh, this is a worldview that I, I will say that uh, is a biblical worldview in the sense that we go to our biblical record to as the final uh, definition for uh, verses and what Jesus says and things like that as it relates to these end times developments. And uh, what we have going on is if uh, you heard my last show, we were talking about preparation and that spiritual preparation is a, the first and at the first forefront of everything that you need to be spiritually prepared. And what I mean by spiritually prepared is that uh, the Christian view is that uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by him. That is a biblical worldview. That is what Jesus says of himself. He says that no man can go unto the Father but by him. All right? That does not mean Buddha. That does not mean Krishna. That does not mean Muhammad. That does not mean any of these uh, ecumenical uh, one world uh, philosophies that the uh, that the uh, Catholic Church is promoting right now um, and that the Protestant Church is promoting too through the, uh, the ecumenical movement. And today's uh, topic is going to be focused on the one world religion. When we talk about the new world order, we're talking about basically... When you break it down, you're talking about three planks. Uh, there are three levels to the New World Order. There's the, uh, there's the religious system, which is going to be the one world religion, which is what we're talking about today, a world religion. And the other ones are economic. The, when they destroy, destroy all currency, they're going to turn us into a cashless society, uh, as you, uh, you, if you follow this Bitcoin development, they just had a Bitcoin collapse uh, last night uh, of one of these things, and that's all digital currency. Um, so everything's going to be digitized so that there can be no economy, an uh, underground economy that cannot be traced. Um, they want to have complete control over the financial arena. And they know that uh, paper currency or fiat currency uh, allows people to operate under the radar still. So they want to have that done with. So that's the second plank of the New World Order is the cashless society, the mark of the beast system where you'll have implanted data into your body to track your whereabouts, to track your... Uh, every move to track every conversation as the NSA is uh, uh, is recording every one of our conversations uh, to track everything about you so that they can uh, control you there there's a, there's no other way around it it's just that this is all about control this is all about slavery uh, the new world order is a satanic slave system it is a luciferian slave system it, its only goal is to put Lucifer in charge and to put Satan in charge uh, during the final chapters of the book of Revelation uh, to play out this end times kingdom, this, uh, this, 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 uh, this satanic kingdom of deception and lies uh, where he will compromise everybody who takes the mark of the beast and compromise them genetically into being no longer human. And therefore, they will be destroyed uh, as final judgment. There's no, uh, uh, there's no salvation for folks who take the mark of the beast. And uh, you have some Protestant preachers and other folks that say that, you know, you can be forgiven and all this kind of stuff, which is... You know, that is a very reckless, dangerous kind of talk, especially when it says that you once people take the mark of the beast, it's very clear there is no forgiveness from that. You become a chimera, you become a hybrid, you become a Nephilim, you become a fallen angel in the sense of it with the genetic code of Lucifer. So you become one of his creation. And that's really when you look at uh, this whole thing with Lucifer 
and uh, uh, God. Uh, uh, Lucifer is not an equal to God, although that the world would portray that Lucifer or Satan is an equal to God. He is a created being of God. He is a fallen, rebellious, uh, uh, psychotic cherub that has uh, been allowed to play out this theme of rebellion in creation. Uh, pre pre Adam, uh, the, the 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 rebellion in the heavens that happened with the angels. Uh, this whole rebellion theme, this whole free will theme, will play out with Lucifer as the head. And uh, where he's at his end time right now. So he's only got a little bit of time left before everything plays out and he is eternally judged uh, and thrown into uh, the lake of fire with the other angels. But the folks who follow him, the humans that rebel against God also, who take the mark of the beast, are going to burn also. Uh, it was reserved for the angels and for Lucifer it was not reserved for humans, but these people are willingly going to make their deals with the devil. As you see all around the world, these uh, George Soros types, uh, the, these Barack Obama types, uh, all these sellouts, uh, whatever they're selling out for that followed the Luciferian uh, philosophy that followed the Luciferian agenda who want to bring in the one world uh, antichrist uh, and, and crown him. So uh, today I'm going to start off with some breaking news. Uh, I still believe it's a very short period of time that we have left as far as freedom of speech in the United States. I believe that uh, you could just see that uh, the people who aren't aware that I talk to uh, and uh, talk about things they just there's a general depression a general lack of energy a general apathy or indifference that people are feeling and um, some are just completely snowed under I mean some are watching these Sochi Olympics that just finished and watching this Daytona 500 stuff and you know they're just going from sport event to sport event in checked out mode they don't want to deal with it and i've had people tell me that directly they said i don't want to deal with anything and if the world ends the world ends you know i don't want to know nothing and i you know there are a percentage of people that act like that and it's like i guess they're the ones that uh, when these things come upon the earth that's talked about uh their hearts will fail them but they wouldn't have uh, made a decision. They've become a passive participant in this eternal game. And um, it's basically, it's a sad thing to see when people don't want to face reality. They want to live in the illusion that things are going to continue the way they are right now. And... Um, it's coming to an end very quickly. It's, uh, I'm not being apocalyptic here in the sense of just being a fear monger. Uh, I don't believe in spreading fear. I, I believe in uh, talking about the truth uh, about what's going on. You have an American system that is run, uh, basically a two-party system that's a one-party system. You have the uh, communists uh, represent the Dem Democratic Party. Uh, Obama's at the head of the Marxists and the communists that uh, represent the, the people in government there. And on the right, uh, you have the fascists. You have the Republican, fascist, Bush, uh, the Nazi, uh, you know, multinational. You know, the only thing matters is uh, multinational corporations and their money. And uh, that's the fascist country club. Uh, they care less, you know. And so you got Nazis and communists who are both developed by the elites. Um, they came out of the elite world. There's not something that wasn't developed by them. They're the ones that have bring, been bringing us wars and uh, uh, financial havoc and wreck and everything. So uh, you have a two-party system. There's a one-party system that's working against the American public right now. They're targeting the middle class because the middle class is the only group that still has some financial uh, underpinnings. And when the middle class in America is gone, then you basically have global uh, tyranny in the sense that there is no freedom or perceived freedom. Uh, we are going to, once they uh, do whatever they're going to do with the shocking the financial world, uh, you know, 
uh, they're just going to, you're going to end up having to deal with the fallout. And uh, hopefully, you know, for us Christians who believe in a rapture, hopefully that uh, before things get uh, horrendously bad, um, where there's just violence in the streets all over the place and innocents are being slaughtered, uh, hopefully before that time, uh, the, the church is raptured out. But I know there's plenty of Christians who believe in the mid-tribulation and the post-tribulation and pre-tribulation and that's not it's not really uh it's going to happen at some point and and uh you know as far as i believe i believe in a pre-trib rapture but it's not really something to sit around and argue about endlessly there's there's whole forums and there's whole whole blogs and whole ministries dedicated to just arguing over this one point and it's really pointless to do that you want to basically just uh, be ready. And this is the spiritual preparedness. You want to be ready uh, at all times because this can come down at any time. There's no there's no going to be like 24-hour warning. Even though people say that when you see this happen, you got 36 hours before the banks close or, you know. There's going to be no predictable warning going on here. It's going to happen in a moment's notice. And you need to be ready at all times. I think uh, that means that you need to repent, admit that you're a sinner, admit that you need Christ, admit that you were deceived by this world system, that you got dragged into chasing after stuff that is pointless, that has no meaning, uh, and that uh, you need to get your soul right with God and uh, ask him to be your savior and, and have him become indwelling in you. And that is that is what we can do. And then turn from your ways and follow him. And, you know, there is no way out of this. The people are thinking that they're, they're, they're... And that was my whole thing on prepping last week. I mean, I'm so sick of watching uh, the gold commercials with, uh, you know, what's in your safe, you know, comments all the time. Uh, talking about uh, sitting on my pile of gold, you know, and I'm going to sit on my pile of platinum and on my pile of silver. Well, you know, it's uh, there is no guarantees. Uh, if they're going to be, if you got these fault lines going off in America with the new Madrid fault line, or you got the West Coast, or we getting nuked or whatever, there's no guarantees that any of that stuff's going to help you at all. You could have, you could be in the mountains in uh, Colorado, uh, buried in like a tick, you know, and uh, have uh, underground storage and all that. That's what the Illuminati been doing. I mean, that's what these people have done. For the last 50 years, they've been building bunkers all around the world, uh, hoarding gold, hoarding uh, resources, hoarding, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, they're, they're the ones that have been preparing for 50 years for this day. They are they think they're going to go underground, uh, burn the world, or, uh, you know, through whatever the events they know is coming up upon the world that they've suppressed from the public. Because you know they, the, 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 the this is where this is where they are deceptive with you when they say things like information is power, you know, and you naively believe, oh, I need to get a more education because if I have more education, then I'll have uh, more ability to market myself and get a better job, and I'll be more intelligent and all this stuff, and which is a total fabricated lie. Uh, no, education. Is, they're, they're talking about different kind of, uh, you know, knowledge. They have knowledge of, of uh, world events. They have knowledge of things to come that uh, they've been suppressing. When you read about the Vatican and their library and the, the vaults and all this, all these people got vaults with all kinds of hidden world history, hidden uh, knowledge in the sense of things that would inform us more clearly. Well, of course, we have the Bible and, uh, you know, the Vatican's been trying to alter that for the last hundred uh, plus years, you know, to water it down and to just gobbledygook, um, you know, paraphrased everything. And uh, but at least, you know, we are informed uh, that uh, of what to be aware of and what's coming. And we don't have to as a Christian, you don't have to worry about everything. OK, there's there's the practical, rational side of your mind that plans. All right, that's your that's your God given ability is to say, oh, a hurricane's coming. Let me get uh, uh, eight pallets of water. 
Let me get, uh, or 10 pallets or whatever you want to call, you know, and let me get some canned food. So if, uh, if all the power's out, I can, uh, I can get the pop top can. So I don't need my can opener and I can uh, put it on my propane uh, grill and warm it up and just eat out of the can. I mean, these are simple things. That's the way we should always prepare like that. I mean, uh, if you go back a hundred years, all, all these farmers and everything, they had the, the cellars where they had their stores and stuff like that. And they had their jarred items and, you know, but then you get into the other side of things and then you get into the uh, kookier side of, of uh, religious prepping uh, where, you know, uh, folks like in, uh, it's very big prepping, very big with the Mormon church. And, of course, my views on that is that the Mormonism came out of Freemasonry. It's very obvious with Joseph Smith. But they have a whole prepping industry in Mormonism where a lot of your prepper resources online and prepper blogs come from the, the Mormon folks. And uh, they're nice people. Um, you know, it's just, uh, of course, I believe, um, you know, it's a deception. But the point of the, the prepping is they believe that uh, it's all built on that when the United States is in jeopardy, they have this this American prophecy or this doomsday prophecy that's not a biblical prophecy. It's the prophecy of America. Uh, where they, when the, the the nation is in jeopardy, when the Constitution is in jeopardy, and this is why Mitt Romney was sitting up there. You know, this is, was the, the Mormons are thinking Mitt Romney is going to be the fulfillment of their Mormon apocalyptic prophecy. Uh, when the Constitution is in jeopardy, the Mormons will swoop in, and save the Constitution, uh, set up the capital of America in Independence, Missouri. And form a commune where basically you uh, you take all your stores and all the things you've been prepping and you give it to the Mormon elders, the the central you know planners of the Mormon church or whatever, and they divvy it out to the people. It's just another form of communism. It's a it's a commune mentality, and uh, you know, but that's where this prepping idea comes from. You know, for them, it's a they have a post uh, American apocalypse view of uh prepping um but we are at that point you know we're we're at that point where this is developing uh we've get, been given all the signs by the illuminati that the, they said prepare for war anybody who has any common sense understands how they're talking to each other in symbols and all this and they do all their kooky rituals with the super bowl and um this is going to be a year of war and uh, we see that, uh, you know, Obama and Kerry are trying to get us back into Syria. And, uh, you know, we're going to go over some of this uh, war news. I mean, the breaking news here. And uh, then I'll get into things that pertain to the one world religion. But I think that things have developed so fast. Things develop so fast that it's 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 um, it's an exponential curve we're watching uh, where uh, the stories, you know, and it, it is a prophecy of the end times. The end times is also the characteristic is knowledge will uh, run to and fro. People, you know, will pursue knowledge. It's all over the place, you know. And that's what the Internet is. We we have all kinds of access to great stuff. Uh, you know, there, uh, people who use it responsibly can find all kinds of information that's uh, great. And we can communicate and we can uh, educate each other on different aspects that we're not familiar with, and so it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and you know, when I'm, I'm when I'm uh, writing blogs on uh, technology uh, and uh, advancements, uh, they all look great on the surface. You know, you can look at any of the articles that I wrote on my blog at uh, twclark66.wordpress.com. And you'll find uh, I have all kinds of technology stuff that uh, Google and other uh, associated companies are putting out. Now, if you just look at them on the surface level, you see there's all kinds of nice benefits to it, you know. But you have to look at the spirit behind it. You have to look at the people behind it. You know, when I start seeing everybody is a New Ager or everybody is a Luciferian or everybody's a Freemason or everybody is a Satanist and they're running tech companies, uh, and, you know, you start going, well, their philosophy differs from me. So therefore 
they don't believe in honesty. They, uh, you know, they, it's a do as thou wilt kind of world to these people. And that's what you're seeing playing out right now. Selfishness and greed, uh, you know, are the main, main promoting factors here. That's good coffee. So I'm going to get into a, a controversial piece that just came out, uh, you know, a couple days ago. It, it again, this uh, this coincides with my uh, Freemason philosophy uh, that uh, uh, regarding the players on the world stage are members of secret societies. And when you were hearing me talk about uh, the Jesus dealing with the secret societies in the Bible in uh, the Freemason episode and secret societies. Uh, the Illuminati is a secret society. It was uh, formed by a former Jesuit. And a lot of people say, what? Well, there is no such thing as former Jesuits. They're just Jesuits masquerading as something else. And that's true. Uh, Weishoff, you know, uh, formed it and, uh, you know, infiltrated Freemasonry, which was also, you know, a mystery religion. And took it over, uh, the inner core of it at least. And there's a lot of uh, external Freemasons who aren't privy to the Luciferian doctrine. But, uh, you know, this, these are the guys at the center who uh, commune uh, with uh, Lucifer or Satan. And he, he gives them the uh, script to work off of. And that was the whole discussion we had with Albert Pike and his three world wars. Well, we're coming into the Third World War right now. We're fulfilling Albert Pike's Third World War with um, Mancini. And um, this this article here um, definitely puts on the table the interconnectedness of the, uh, el the elites who are connected through secret societies. And... Uh, so the governments, uh, if you have any biblical understanding and you know when uh, Jesus was tempted uh, when he was doing his 40 days fast, uh, he was tempted by Lucifer uh, that if he bowed down to him, he'd give him all the kingdoms of the earth. And so uh, Lucifer has dominion over the kingdoms of this earth. So the people who are running these governments, the... the uh, you know, they're they're the folks uh, off camera, behind the scenes, the support. You know, that are all working for this one world government. So it doesn't make it doesn't shock you if you know the new world order is a one world Luciferian satanic government. Then you know that the the governments that exist out there that supposedly are democratic or independent or monarchies or whatever. Uh, uh, are going to be moving their people into uh, being part of this one world government. Okay, that's what the United Nations was for. That's when we talked about uh, Blavatsky and Bailey and, and their Luciferian doctrine that uh, the Lucifer, the light bearer, will bring enlightenment to, to the globe and through this one world government. So this story here might be hard for some people to accept. This story here says U.S. and Israel quietly provide military support and parts to Iran, which in turn is arming Syria. So right now, most people are. This is from ZeroHedge.com. Uh, this is an article that's basically saying now, if you're an, a regular American, a Fox News watching American or something, you know that. Uh, we're supposed to support Israel, who is worried about Iran getting a nuclear bomb and nuclear bomb. Uh, you know, Israel's got to strike them before they get their nuclear bomb. And that uh, they've been playing that nuclear bomb game, the global, you know, uh, states, the, the countries for decades. I mean, you know, Iran, I'm sure, has had nuclear bombs uh, for a few decades, probably. Uh, it's not hard to get a nuclear bomb uh, going all the way back with North Korea and places like that. It can, uh, and it's kind of, this is it's a silly proposition, but this is for public consumption. The public consumption is that we're supposed to be worried over Iran getting a bomb and that those crazy Iranians are going to bomb uh, bomb uh, Israel. 
So it says U.S. and Israel, that's the two players that we're, we're familiar with, provide military support and parts to Iran. That doesn't make sense to an American who watches Fox News. That doesn't make any sense. Which in turn is arming Syria? Why are they arming Syria? So let's go into this. Let's re read this. And this will show you that uh, the, the, the general news uh, consuming population is uh, deceived uh, on a consistent basis. And that uh, the, the elites have their own network and they have their own goals. And it's a Luciferian goals and Luciferian agenda. They do not care about city states. They do not care about nations. They don't care about any of this stuff. They don't care how many people get killed or die to accomplish what they want to accomplish. So uh, this uh, article says that uh, what is surprising in recent months is how quickly in the aftermath of the Syrian failed escalation script from last summer, Iran quickly dropped off the axis of America's worst enemies and from the biggest boogeyman has rapidly become a nation with which the U.S. is eager to resume diplomatic and trade relations. Sure, Israel pretended to be angry about Iran's ascent in the ranks of U.S. foreign allies to be and issued a few angry press releases, but that, all, that is all it was, posturing. Fit only for the front page of tabloids. It is what was happening behind the scenes that is noteworthy. Okay? And what is happening behind the scenes is the same thing that happens every time the U.S. or Israel or any other Western nation finds a surprising new ally. Said ally proceeds to purchase military equipment from the U.S. or other Western nations using loans from the U.S. or other Western nation banks. Enter bizarre twist number one. U.S. companies selling military parts to none other than the formerly country non grata, at least until mid-2013, Iran. And then this quotes Reuters. Uh, so U.S. aerospace companies are seeking permission to sell airliner parts to Iran for first time in three decades in a key test of the temporary relief on sanctions given under talks to curtail Iran's nuclear activities. At least two leading manufacturers, Boeing and engine-making General Electric, have applied for expert licenses in a six-month window agreed by Iran and six world powers in November. Industry officials and other sources familiar with the matter said. If approved, the sales would be the first acknowledged dealings between U.S. aerospace companies and Iran since 1979, U.S. hostage crisis, led to the sanctions that were later broadened during the dispute over Iran's nuclear activities. A source familiar with the matter said that Boeing, the world's biggest manufacturer of passenger jets, had also filed a request for permission to export parts to Iran. Boeing declined to comment. Of course they would. Now, Boeing is a multinational, right? And, you know, whatever's good for a multinational is what uh, becomes public, uh, public law. So they declined for, uh, to comment on that. The bizarre twist number two, GE is doing it for the kids. A GE spokesman said his company has been asking since 2004 for permission to provide parts and maintenance for engines for safety reasons without profiting from the scheme. Oh, they're so, uh, General, General Electric is always so generous. GE, the world's largest maker of jet engines by sales, refiled its request after the sanctions relief came into force, he added. We don't want to make a penny on it. It's entirely for flight safety, Rick Kennedy said, adding that GE would donate any proceeds to charity. But of course, because when one thinks uh, corporate generosity, uh, one thinks GE, you know. Anybody who knows anything about General Electric knows that General Electric, uh, I forget what, it was probably a couple of years ago now, did not pay any corporate uh, taxes. So GE, as a, a multinational corporation, was able, through its lawyers, to fudge all the special interest uh, tax provisions that they could with the federal government. And you, paying, you, you paid more taxes yourself than GE paid. Uh, and they made record several billion dollars uh, that year and paid no taxes on it. So they're doing it just for the kids. They have no interest in money, not GE. And since I paid more in taxes than General Electric, that just makes me 
dumb because I should have had a congressman or a senator or somebody could have written a law or pushed forward a law exempting me from paying taxes. So here's a bizarre twist number three. It is not only the U.S. that is seeking to promptly capitalize on this temporary elimination of Iran sanctions. It is Iran's perpetual nemesis, Israel. That is not only planning to sell weapons to Iran, but is already doing so. However, unlike the U.S., which at least has clumsily stumbled upon a, a detente whose only purpose is logically to get Iran to buy made in American weapons, with Israel, the hypocrisy takes on a whole new meaning. Now, this is quoting the Telegraph. Okay. Iran to force... Let's see. Uh, takes on... Okay. Let's see here. It says, visiting Golan Heights on Tuesday, uh... He accused Iran of arming those who are carrying out the slaughter in neighboring Syria. I would like to tell the world today, as the talks between the major powers and Iran are being resumed, that Iran has changed neither its aggressive policy nor its brutal character. Iran is continuing to support the Assad regime, which is slaughtering its own people, Mr. Netanyahu said. So they're talking about Netanyahu. And this is where it gets embarrassing for Bibi. It was Israel that was arming Iran. Uh, uh, let's see. A court in Athens has told the Telegraph that parts appearing on an American list of forb forbidden military grade materials had been shipped from Israel on two occasions, apparently destined for Iran. The seized items uh, compromised, uh, comprised, I'm sorry, spare parts for military aircraft, the constant speed drive designed for the F 4 Phantom Jet, and a voltage output sensor used in the F 14 Tomcat. The parts were confiscated by Greece's financial crimes uh, squad and were being sent to U.S. for an investigation, court officials said. Israeli arms dealers twice tried to send spare parts for fighter planes to Iran. The Telegraph has established flouting an international arms embargo and openly contradicting the bitter enmity between the Jewish state and the Islamic regime. The illegal shipments are now being investigated by the U.S. Homeland Security Department. Okay, so we got BB selling parts to Iran when we're supposed to all be going to war over Iran and a nuclear bomb. So, uh, let's see. Uh, to, for those who are not convinced, the defense and foreign ministries in Israel declined to comment on the seizures, which were first revealed by Catherine Marini, a Greek newspaper. Finally, tying it all together is another report from Reuters in which we learn that as Syria's war nears the start of its fourth year, Iran has stepped up support on the ground for President Bashir al-Assad, providing elite teams to gather intelligence and train troops, sources with knowledge of military movements, say. This further backing from Tehran, along with uh, deliveries of munitions equipment from Moscow, is helping to keep Assad in power at a time when neither his own forces nor opposition fighters have a decisive edge on the battlefield. Assad's forces have failed to capitalize fully on advances they made last summer with the help of Iran, his major backer in the region, and the Hezbollah fighters that Tehran backs, and which have provided important battlefield support for Assad. So you see here, you got the fomenting of wars, you got the fabrication of conflicts, you got the, uh, you got the global elite leadership uh, who are all initiated into this uh, Freemason society. Uh, for those who didn't know, uh, I believe it was Mitt Romney and um, Bibi uh, were uh, Netanyahu were both initiated in the Freemasonry. Uh, I think they were attending MIT. I'm not sure where to, I'm drawing a blank on which city it was, to, but they were initiated from the studies I've done in the past uh, into Freemasonry, both of them, um, during their time going to college, I believe. And so uh, you have a free nascent Mason network out there that if you just look back in history with the French Revolution and with the Boston Tea Party and all this, all they ever do is they, they stir up a fight. They get a false flag going. Uh, a false flag is nothing more than, say, with the Boston Tea Party, the Freemasons dressed up in uh, Indian attire and raided uh, raided a uh, stock, uh, a storage warehouse and dumped all the uh, tea 
from the ships into the harbor uh, to blame the uh, that the Indians did it. But that's what a false flag is. A false flag is looking like that you're somebody who you're not to provoke an international incident. So the Freemasons are well well uh, trained in that. Uh, I know there's lower level Freemasons getting upset with me saying this, but uh, it's the inner workings of the inner part of their system the elites who manipulate you know they hide within the center of the uh, freemason lodges at the most elite levels okay and at the super elite levels of freemasonry you have just straight bloodline uh, uh you know that's what gets you in so so we have this uh fabrication of a uh, of military conflicts going on here where one storyline doesn't work. So we all get upset at uh, Obama and Kerry and call them idiots and all this. And they back down from going to war with Syria. And then uh, they come back the next day and now they're best friends with Iran. And, you know, and so but now we're going back into where the as the Illuminati has set in and in, into play, uh, they've set into play this going to war in that region. So. Uh, Right now, what we're seeing is an Illuminati agenda to start World War III. Uh, they're destabilizing this whole section of the world uh, right there in the Middle East. And where you see it having right now is in the Ukraine, which I believe is a completely Illuminati-generated uh, color revolution, a false revolution. Because uh, you don't know how many of the people in there setting fires or uh, or you just don't know how many of these people are CIA trained uh, folks and also KGB people or whatever. Uh, they want to split the uh, Ukraine down the center to uh, force a uh, Hegelian dialectic again. The Their terms are the right and left or the West and the East. So in this tense, it's going to be the Western world versus the Eastern world or uh, supposedly the free West versus communist East. Uh, they, this is just the formula. They always do it. It's divide and conquer. So they're going to they're going to cause a conflict here to escalate uh, and the citizenry are going to be. Uh, punished and pulled into this stuff and you're going to have an east west conflict going on there and uh, it's going to draw russia in and it's going to draw you know nato in and uh it's it's basically very similar to what happened in world war one where everything toppled because there was all these inter alliances where if this happens to you then i'm forced by uh, a treaty to go to war with the person who did that and so that's how the illuminati toppled europe at that time was to get them dragged into this world war one and they got communism instituted in russia and uh, if you ever study the civil war in america you'll find one of the most interesting sections about the civil war was that uh, i'll point out a couple things that a lot of people are never taught um, that uh, the Tsar of Russia actually uh, sailed into, uh, I believe it was New York Harbor, uh, with his fleet uh, to support um, the Abraham Lincoln at the time. And uh, I actually have a, uh, a one of the rare books uh, commemorating the Tsar's visit to America during the Civil War. It's actually a very interesting thing. Uh, of course, this is not taught to the American public that the Tsar came to the defense of Abraham Lincoln. Um, and that uh, other things that people don't understand is that the Vatican supported the South during the World War, uh, during the Civil War. Uh, and so the Vatican, uh, another point that people don't understand about the Vatican is that the Vatican was pro-slavery up until the early 1900s. Their official stance was that they could support uh, uh, regimes that had slavery. So here you have the supposedly Christian, uh, you know, Vatican supporting uh, slavery uh, because, you know, that's... You know, if you want to dig below the surface, I'm not going to get into the Vatican right now. I'm just trying to explain to you what is going on here. 
the, the czar came in to, uh, to support uh, the re republic um, uh, that had been, that the Illuminati was trying to do a divide and conquer with the Civil War uh, to split it into two parts. And so here you had the Vatican on the, the southern side and you had the czar coming in onto the, uh, uh, onto the, uh, to the uh, Union side. And that's basically where the payback came to Russia. Russia, the payback for Russia and the czars was the First World War. The Illuminati did not forget what the, the, Russian, the, the Russian independent sovereign uh, king of Russia did uh, with getting in the way of the Rothschild agenda of the Civil War. And uh, they did major payback on the czar and they annihilated that family and they annihilated the monarchy of Russia and they instituted uh, communism in Russia. And so, you know, from then on, what uh, the Russians uh, have been played off as the Hegelian left. And, of course, America has played off as the Hegelian right. And, you know, I, I tried to emphasize that people do not use these people's language. When you're sitting there watching Bill O'Reilly or any of these people on TV, don't listen to their language. Don't let them say the left. Don't let them say the right. Don't let them say that. If you believe in the Constitution, you believe in the Constitution. You don't believe in this left-right garbage, okay? The Constitution is very clear and is very easy to enforce. These people make it complicated on purpose because they're traitors and they want to betray America. And they want to betray all of us and they want to gut the middle class and make us slaves. It's a very simple concept to get across to anybody. Anybody who wants to wake up can see this. And this report here by... Uh, just seeing the uh, the military sales from the United States to Iran and from Israel to Iran uh, just shows you what a big hoax this whole New World Order fiasco is uh, that they're just trying to uh, basically orchestrate this uh, false dichotomy. And it's just a Luciferian elite at the top of the global banking uh, arena and uh, at the at the top of these. Um, at the top of the uh, world scene with this UN stuff. So uh, basically, I would, I'm just going to take a little water break right here, and uh, I'll be right back, and we'll get started with the One World Religion. If you planned on following the presidential election in November, you might want to plug your ears. A big election spoiler is coming up. A minor software glitch at the Diebold Corporation today caused thousands of electronic voting machines to accidentally release the results of the presidential election months ahead of schedule. According to the group of military and corporate leaders that has chosen every American president since Eisenhower has chosen every American president since Eisenhower has chosen every American president since Eisenhower, Diebold's mistake marks the first time the nation's leader has been revealed prematurely. I don't even know if I can enjoy the sham election now that I know who's going to win. If you can't trust your shadowy overlords to keep a secret, what is the purpose, really, of voting in the public democracy? Uh, I'm fine with it. I mean, he was going to get my meeting this vote anyway. Despite so. the leak, all of the presidential candidates have so far said they'll continue their campaigns. Newt Gingrich isn't about to give up just because he lost the election. He'll give up when he's supposed to on election day. And he'll act surprised. Joining us now to talk about the leaked results is Diebold PR spokesman Ernie Kenilworth. Mr. Kenilworth, this was quite a mistake. And we at Diebold would like to formally apologize to all of our shadowy puppet masters. This will not happen again. Please have mercy on us. Do you think that people will still even vote in this election? We certainly hope they will. Uh, this country is based on the fantasy that the government is the voice of the people. Uh, going through the motions of voting and uh, keeping the kingmaker's dealing secret is uh, central to our culture. Why do, why do we need electronic voting machines in the first place? They're just not as reliable as our cloaked masters, no matter how good the software gets. Well, I understand people's concerns, but from now on, we at Diebold will see to it that uh, we properly safeguard the illusion of democracy, the illusion of democracy, the illusion of democracy, the illusion of democracy, the illusion of democracy.
democracy for all Americans. Well, let's hope so. So for those of us who will watch, what can we expect on election night? Oh, the same great show that you have always seen. Uh, we will be pretending to count votes, pretending to count votes, pretending to count votes, pretending to count votes, and uh, we will be running a, a, an ongoing total throughout the night. But wouldn't it be possible for them to just choose a different president so that we'll still have that same great surprise? No, I don't think so. However, uh, that does not rule out the possibility for a staged assassination, for a staged assassination, for a staged assassination. Uh, after the president has been placed in office. Oh, I take it that's a hint. You won't get anything else out of me today, Gina. I've already <laughs> said too much. Yeah. I've already said too much. Yeah. I've already said too much. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being with us, Mr. Kenilworth. All right. So um, that was uh, uh, my little gag commercial that I like so much about fake elections. Uh, we're going to jump right into... Uh, some uh, very interesting news. I find uh, uh, if you have not been following the end times deception kind of uh, uh, a breadcrumb trail that uh, I'm looking for, one of the areas that I really enjoy looking at is the uh, archaeological evidence. And uh, when I see stuff, I have been putting postulating and putting forward that this whole end times deception will have several uh, discoveries that will occur just miraculously due to all these earthquakes happening around the world. I find it very interesting that we're seeing a serious ecumenical push right now. Uh, the, that's why we're talking today about the one world religion. Uh, today, uh, we're seeing a push by the Vatican across the board. It's just put, they're on a full full-scale push right now to get this uh, ecumenical agenda go uh, going. Uh, for those who don't know what ecumenical means, uh, the layman's term for it would be, if I was to say, it would be it's all good. You know, <laughs> it's basically say whatever you believe, it's all good. We all worship the same God. It's all good. So uh, the Vatican is no longer uh, following, uh, if they ever did. And, I'll, you know, of course, uh, I find it hard not to. Uh, sit here and be critical of the Vatican because the Vatican uh, is not biblical. They don't follow the Bible. They follow these uh, uh, traditions and they're at the forefront of the New World Order. So how can you not uh, say derisive things about them? I mean, uh, they're the ones who are involved in this one world religion. And so one of the big uh, components uh, to the this one world religion it, it ties into uh, the coming uh, Messiah the, that the world is being spoon-fed by uh, TV, the movies, uh, the uh, Vatican. Uh, this Messiah is the one that the world wants, okay? What you have to remember is the world rejected Jesus Christ. The world turned its back on Jesus Christ and said, we do not want this kind of uh, Messiah. We want a Messiah that's going to have heaven here on earth. And we're all going to, you know, we don't have to change or do anything. We want our own God. So the Vatican and the rest of the world, the uh, Hollywood have been creating the, the, uh, the, the setup for this antichrist to walk onto the scene to be the savior of the world. So the one world religion to say that Buddhism and Islam and Hinduism and that Christianity are all one or can be one is it goes against any common sense. Anybody who can think uh, who can say two plus two equals four can see that those religions do not add up. Okay, they are not the same thing. Christ never said that it's all good. Okay, if Christ said it was all good, he would have wrote down, it's all good. All right, but he didn't say that. He said that my way is the narrow way. Okay, the only way to God is through me. All right, and so this is not a hard concept. So when you got these Freemasons hijacking the whole globe for Baphomet and Lucifer, and, and hijacking Catholicism and hijacking Protestantism and then saying, trying to push these guys out front that, uh, you know, like uh, Rick Warren and uh, Joel Osteen and these all these people who sit there and go, it's all good. 
you know, they're speaking Freemasonry, all right? And you just need to get it in your head that just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's good, all right? So here we got, um, they're going to try to create this, and I was going to do this in a future um, a future. Uh, session if we if we get to it you know because of the shortness of time uh this article is out of biblical archaeology society okay um and um it's quoting from bar magazine uh, bar magazine was uh you know i i believe it's a rothschild supported uh, israeli uh, magazine so therefore you know it's compromised anytime you got rothschilds involved you know you're getting the world luciferian uh, take on things you're not going to get a biblical take on things so this is an interesting article that why would it just come out now okay think why would it come out just a couple of days ago shroud of turin relic or forgery why are they bringing up the shroud of turin story right now what's going on that they should bring up this uh the shroud of turin story we've had the shroud of turin discussed for the last several centuries and, uh, you know, is it fake? And then they come out and say it's fake. And then they come out later and says it's uh, carbon dating puts it this or that. So why are they bringing this up again? Okay. So is this Shroud of Turin real or fake? Its authenticity has long been questioned. Radio carbon dating tests back conducted in the 1980s concluded the Shroud dated to 13th to 14th century. However, claims that an earthquake that hit Jerusalem in 33 CE may have increased the shroud's carbon-14 levels, putting it into doubt accuracy of the original radiocarbon test. The shroud is purported to be Jesus' burial cloth. Front and back images of the man who seems to have been crucified can be seen on the 14 by 3.5 foot uh, linen cloth. So basically what they're putting forward in this story uh, you know, is uh, here they're saying that, okay, uh, that a earthquake in, uh, in around 33 BC, let's see if I can find that uh, direct line here. Okay, so it says a research team led by Alberto Carpent Carpentieri of Politecnico di Torino in Italy. Okay, there's my Italian. Kind of tells you that he might be Catholic. Have you ever thought of that? Hypothesize in a newly published study that an earthquake that hit Jerusalem in 33 CE may have been strong enough to cause neutron radiation. This phenomenon in turn may have created the images on the shroud through radiation imagery as well as corrupted the radiocarbon testing conducted in the sh on the shroud in the 1980s. It may therefore be possible the shroud is older than the 13th, 14th dates, uh, century dates, originally suggested by the 1980s radiocarbon testing. Okay. Uh, so they're calling into question a neutron radiation caused by an earthquake. And they're talking about the 13th to 14th uh, century dates. The problem with this kind of research, okay, is if it's Catholic, can you believe it? I mean, that's what we're coming down to. Can you believe anything that's coming out of uh, Italy or the Vatican sponsored anything? Um, I know from uh, research that was uh, conducted uh, by Dr. Joy Pugh. Uh, that the uh, Shroud of Turin uh, was before it came into the Pope's possession uh, that people had done uh, blood, taken blood samples from it and that uh, they reported that uh, they could uh, you know, reconstruct the whole DNA and the, the blood was actually alive. And this is a main point that's never been reported uh, that she's reporting uh, that uh, the blood is alive that is on the shroud, okay? And that it is Jesus' blood. And that the image that came through the shroud was from a, uh, a radiation of the body uh, vibrationally uh, going through the shroud. Uh, with, like, like in Star Trek when you're getting beamed up. You know, how do you dissolve? It dissolved through the shroud in a light beam, and it kind of did an X-ray imagery of every aspect of Jesus' body on that shroud. And nobody's been able to ever duplicate the shroud, uh, duplicate any, any, 
everybody who's tried and don't they don't even come close. So what's also interesting is that the folks who took the blood samples uh, that uh, were not Vatican people, uh, I believe that on the original shroud team uh, that was examining it, uh, that they just all conveniently died, you know, um, and uh, it's, all, it's always interesting how people conveniently die when things related to uh, anything like the shroud is involved. Uh, so the Shroud of Turin is going to play into this end times deception. Uh, it, uh, I believe, and from everything I've read, uh, it is uh, the real uh, Shroud of uh, Jesus. Uh, the 13th and 14th century date uh, has been uh, conclusively uh, linked to that the Shroud was repaired at the, at the section that they were uh, testing. That that section that they were testing was a rewoven section of the shroud that was rewoven in the 13th or 14th century, and that was documented that that section was rewoven. And but the people who subjected the testing uh, wanted that portion of the shroud tested. So what does that tell you? It's a cover up. Okay, they don't want the general public to have the information. They want them to believe to not pay attention to the authenticity that uh, the shroud, if it has living blood on it, uh, and this will play into the end time deception. There's no doubt about it. All we got to get into is talking about cloning. And would somebody want to clone the DNA of uh, Jesus Christ? You just think about that one. Okay. Whether you believe it or not, if you had the actual DNA of Christ and you got all these crazy cloners out there that are going around the globe right now, and you know how people are are doing this, and they've been doing it since World War II with cloning humans. Uh, you know they've had access to the blood of Christ uh, from the shroud. So what do you put those two together, and what do you think you're going to get here during the end times deception? And I, I, I'm putting that out there. It's very controversial, but it actually, when it resonates with you, it makes a lot of sense. So what would happen... If somebody cloned the actual body of Christ from his DNA off the shroud and it became a vessel for the uh, for Lucifer or Satan's spirit to inhabit, would you not call that the abomination of desolation where Lucifer or Satan is sitting in the temple? Can you see, can you wrap your mind around that one? Yes, I, I do believe the Jews will reconstruct a temple and that uh, the Antichrist will sit in that temple uh, to fulfill uh, a physical manifest, manifestation. But the temple, as all Christians who have the indwelling of Christ know, is the body. And if you had Jesus' body, wouldn't that be the ultimate uh, abomination of desolation to, you know, Lucifer wanted to be like the Most High? Well, what if wanting to be like the Most High was being the Most High physically? Now, how's that one sit with you? So that's, uh, that's what we're looking at. We got a, a real potential for some crazy trickery during these end times with that scenario. Um, so we're going to... There's an article from The Truth about and the Pope Francis and the emerging one world religion. So is Pope Francis taking steps that are laying the groundwork for the emergence of a one world religion? If that question sounds quite bizarre to you, I urge you to read the rest of this article. We live at a time when globalization is advancing rapidly. And that's that's the Globalization is just the integration into a, a, a consolidation of everything becoming one. It's kind of like everything is just being centralized. And uh, all you got to know is that any anytime that something is centralized, it's easier to control. And that's all these world dictators, this Luciferian gang want to do. They want to centralize everything. I mean, if we weren't going to, if we weren't in the end times, I, w I would say, if we weren't in the end times as a population, as a people, and that you wanted to resist tyranny, 
what you would do is not engage in any of their wars, not sign on to any of their racial right-left garbage, not sign on into any of their national right-left garbage, not work with these people and go into war or anything, and decentralize everything back to the local and the state level to where these people couldn't do anything. You would not have a, uh, a centralized banks where they could uh, put whole countries in the debt because they, they own that Federal Reserve Bank. You know, you would go back to real currency. You would get uh, put people like Monsanto out of business. You would uh, take back your crops. You would take back your water. You would take back your, your power grids. You would take back everything. And you would decentralize to where nobody could do anything to you. But uh, that's not going to happen. I'm just saying that we're going to fulfill end times prophecies. I'm just saying that if if you wanted to uh, not have an evil tyranny, you stop playing their game and you stop uh, playing into their uh, system. All right. And you decentralize everything. So there is no central anything. And then you would find out the people would be in control and that the uh, the elite criminals could be arrested and they could be put in their own FEMA camps so that they could sit there and rot in their own FEMA camps. But that's not going to happen. We're going to have a fulfillment of an end times biblical prophecy. The return of Christ is going to happen after the seven year uh, tribulation where the wrath of God is poured out on the world that rejected him and Lucifer uh, accepted Lucifer and are in, and are in full rebellion. So it says, is Pope Francis taking steps at laying groundwork for emergence of a one world religion? If that question sounds quite bizarre to you, I urge you to read the rest of this article. We live at a time when globalization is advancing rapidly. The global economy is more integrated than it has ever been before. And with each passing year, new economic treaties tie us even more closely together. And global governance, as the elite like to call it, is also steadily gaining ground. Through a whole host of global institutions, such as the United Nations, the World Bank, the IMF, and the Bank of International Settlements, global governments are working together to a degree that is unprecedented. Well, what about religion? Is there evidence that we are also witnessing the globalization of religion? Well, yes, there is. In fact, it appears that Pope Francis intends to lead the way. Wow, that's amazing. Who would have ever thought that the Pope of the Catholic Church, being a Jesuit, would want to lead the way to a one world religion? Since he has been Pope, Francis has expressed a desire for unity with the Eastern Orthodox, the Anglicans, and many other major Protestant denominations. But more than a few eyebrows were raised when he recently sent a video message to Kenneth Copeland and his congregation. At the time that the video message was played to the congregation, one speaker declared that Luther's protest is over. Oh boy, don't you love that? Don't you love hearing that? We all want to go back to a Luciferian-led uh, fake Christianity. The uh, Catholic and charismatic renewal is the hope of the church, exclaims Anglican Episcopal Bishop Tony Palmer before a group of cheering followers at the Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Palmer said that those words are from the Vatican. Before playing the video, message from Pope Francis to Kenneth Copeland, Palmer told the crowd, when my wife saw that she, was, could, she could be Catholic and charismatic and evangel evangelical and Pentecostal, and it was absolutely accepted in the Catholic Church, she said that she would like to reconnect her roots to the Catholic culture. So she did. The crowd cheered as he continued, brothers and sisters, Luther's protest is over. Is yours? Those who are not familiar, this is not, uh, for those uh, who might not know, there was a, what is called the Protestant Reformation. And there was the, uh, the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church, two separate entities. And the, uh, the forming of the Jesuit order was to, as a response to Luther uh, separating into the Protestant church. And what the, what the Jesuits did was they brought about what was called the Inquisition. The Inquisition was a time where if you did not uh, acknowledge uh, that the Pope was, the, uh, it was Christ on earth and the head of the, the Holy Church, uh, then you were executed if you uh, read your own Bible or denied him as the, uh, the leader of the church. 
and the Inquisition was a form of uh, institutionalized torture of people who would not follow uh, the Pope. And so basically in the most Christian sense, the Christian uh, Catholic Church killed fellow Christians for not acknowledging the Pope as their leader, uh, where the word Pope doesn't show up once in the Bible. It uh, doesn't say follow the Pope in the Bible. It's not biblical. It's just Rome trying to uh, hijack religion uh, to uh, dictate the Roman um, you know, uh, dominion theology, uh, conquest through land and everything else. So the, the Inquisition, the Reformation, the uh, Catholic uh, Church, uh, if you ask any teenager out there in high school, uh, do you know what the Reformation is? They'll all say no, because they're not taught it. It's the most significant point in uh, Western civilization as the reason for people coming to America to get away from the persecution of totalitarian dictatorial uh, regimes uh, re headed up by the Catholic Church through the Inquisition. And you will find it's been erased from uh, the memory of uh, all education. Uh, a, uh, the United States founded on Protestantism, which founded all the elite uh, universities, uh, Princeton and Harvard, all founded by these uh, uh, Protestant pastors uh, who had an explosion in education and the, the dissemination of uh, information throughout the whole population that every kid in America should be educated. Uh, that was not a Catholic that was not Catholic philosophy. Uh, the Dark Ages existed under the Catholic Church. The Pope wants to return us to the Dark Ages, uh, but it's much more sinister this time. Uh, he won't be in control of it when the, uh, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church get uh, destroyed during the time of the Tribulation. And just pure Luciferian doctrine will run rampant, or pure Satanic doctrine will run rampant. So... Um, so we have this, uh, Kenneth Copeland, they're mentioning Kenneth Copeland here. Kenneth Copeland is a 33rd degree Mason. So we have Freemasonry again. We have a Jesuit Pope named Pope Francis, who is a Mason. And so is it any shock to your system that one mason and one denomination hooks up with another mason and another denomination all knowing that there's a another agenda behind the scenes and so um let's see uh they start talking about luther's protest is it really o over uh it said during the council of trent the catholics condemned to hell anyone that believes in salvation through faith in jesus alone uh the only way through Christ is to believe he is the Messiah Messiah, and, and believe that you can't do it by works. Christ is all in all. He does the works. He created everything. All I can do is confess that I'm a sinner and I'm in my fallen state. And by faith, I believe in him as uh, my only salvation. And I follow no man. Uh, I follow Christ and Christ alone. So you can see by this I should be killed. You know, and that according to a Catholic traditional Catholic doctrine uh, and the famous phrase uh, that we'll see here. If anyone saith that by faith alone, the pious is justified in such wise as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to obtaining the grace of justification and that it is not in any way necessary that he be prepared and disposed by the movement of his own will, let him be anathema, which means, you you know, uh, I'm wrong, and because I'm wrong, I deserve to die. Now, I don't remember really Christ ever uh, killing anybody uh, because they uh, didn't agree with him or they didn't believe he was the Messiah. He presented himself to the world, and the world killed Christ. Okay? Uh, he didn't kill people. The world killed them. Lucifer's world killed Christ. And in the best Luciferian tradition, the popes and the Catholic Church in the past killed the Christians who wouldn't follow their belief system that you're supposed to 
uh, not read your Bible and just listen in Latin to some guy speaking Latin, which you don't understand, to some priest over here that's been ordained by the church to talk in Latin to you and that you're supposed to go to confession and confess stuff to these people and yeah, pay alms and pay this and pay that and pay for everything, pay for purgatory, pay, 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 you know, so... Uh, they're the ones who follow the Luciferian agenda of killing people. Okay, the true Bible-believing church who believe biblically uh, that Christ is Savior and Lord, they know that revenge is uh, Christ alone. It is not a person's uh, place to take revenge on somebody who doesn't re agree with you. So the Catholics have never renounced that stand, and they won't because the Catholic Church never changes. Okay. Uh, just like I said, they 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 supported uh, publicly. They publicly supported the position of slavery up until around 1900. So instead, it has been reaffirmed many times over the years. If Pope Francis really did want to reach out to Protestants, he he should start by reversing the Council of Trent on this. As it stands, it is official Catholic doctrine that all Protestants are anathema. But apparently that is not going to stop many Protestants from reuniting with Rome and declaring Francis to be their pope. Of course, this article is missing out that Kenneth Copeland and uh, his crazy uh, doctrine is a New Age uh, Freemason uh, doctrine. Uh, Copeland has said that he is God in one of his crazy little rants that he does. And, uh, you know, you have to... Any of these main media people who are supported on public television uh, that have high visibility are generally going to be Freemasons when you look in their backgrounds. Okay. Meanwhile, Pope Francis has also been aggressively courting Muslims. The following quote from Pope Francis comes from remarks that he made during his very first ecumenical meeting. I then greet and cordially thank you all, dear friends, belonging to our religious traditions, first of all the Muslims who worship the one God, living and merciful, and call upon him in prayer, and all of you. I really appreciate your presence. In it, I see a tangible sign of the will to grow in mutual esteem and cooperation for the common good of humanity. The Catholic Church is aware of the importance of promoting friendship and respect between men and women of different religious traditions. I wish to repeat this, promoting friendship and respect between men and women of different religious traditions. It also attests the valuable work that the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue performs. So did you catch that? Apparently Pope Francis believes that Catholics and Muslims worship the same God. Uh, more recently, Francis made the following statement about Muslims. We must never forget that they profess to hold the faith of Abraham. And together with us, they adore the one merciful God who will judge humanity on the last day. Yes, sure they do. Okay, so by making this statement, Pope Francis is rejecting another of the most fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. You see, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God, okay? Muslims hate this doctrine and say there is no God but Allah. This is a very simple concept to get across, but when you have an uneducated population that is kept biblically ignorant, uh, which our society is very biblically ignorant, uh, the uh, human, humanistic... Uh, uh, education system that drives out Christianity from every crevice of everything is meant to keep you biblically ignorant so that when the end times come upon you, you have no concept of what's going on and you're going to take the mark of the beast and you're going to lose your soul. Very simple to understand what's going on here. That uh, the these these organized religious leaders such as the Jesuit Freemason Pope Francis is leading people into a Luciferian one world religion. Okay. So um, let's see what else they say here. So that's his comments with the, the Muslims regarding that. Uh, and Francis recently raised some eyebrows when he made the following statement about atheists. The Lord created us in his image and likeness, and we are in the image of the Lord, and he does good. And all of us have this commandment at heart, do good and do not do evil, all of us. But Father, this is not Catholic. He cannot do good. 
Yes, he can. The Lord has redeemed all of us, all of us with the blood of Christ, all of us, not just Catholics, everyone. Father, the atheists, even the atheists, everyone. We must meet one another doing good. But I don't believe, Father, I am an atheist, but do good. We will meet one another there. There was a lot of debate about what Francis meant by that, and the Vatican issued a statement declaring the Catholic doctrine on these matters has, had not changed, but without a doubt, a lot of people were troubled by it. Okay, so, you know, he's doing the Freemason line, which is that we all have served one God. Okay, just get this through your head with the Freemasonry stuff. It's universalism. If you worship Buddha, if you worship Christ, if you worship uh, Muhammad or uh, Allah, uh, if you worship Hinduism, if you worship Kali or Shiva uh, or the Brahma, uh, you are worshiping the same God. It is the same God in many languages, you know, and so this is the Freemason philosophy. Uh, what this does is it gobbledygooks the whole mechanism and sets up the people that believe it's all good to follow their one leader. They are one cosmic Christ that shows up. So the Muslims are going to be looking for the Mahdi, uh, which will, the Antichrist will fulfill all the, the requirements of the Mahdi. And the, uh, the gobbledygook Christians who follow a Freemason uh, universalistic uh, gobbledygook that uh, Kenneth Copeland is espousing uh, will be ready for the Antichrist too. So what have the Freemasons done? They've set up the whole earth to be ready to take the mark of the beast and sing Kumbaya together. Okay, everybody's going to sing Kumbaya except kill the Bible-believing Christian because they're just old sticks in the mud. Uh, they can't, they're not going to evolve. These guys are broken. Uh, you know, they're Neanderthals. And you know, you know what Charles Darwin says, you know, survival of the fittest, right? And so let's uh, knock off the, let's get rid of that old negative energy and all sit here and hug and kumbaya together with positive energy, you know. So that's where we're going here. Pope Francis is leading the way. Uh, so that's why I believe Pope Francis, if, if I was just going to, uh, I'm just guessing, of course, nobody really knows. Uh, some people believe that he's the Antichrist. Some people believe uh, Barack Obama is the Antichrist. I believe uh, Pope Francis is the, the false prophet. He's the guy that's going to say, all right, billions of people that are now united under the one world religion, uh, you follow me and uh, I will point you to... Uh, I will point you to God, and that's the guy over there. Worship this guy, and so that's what that's what's going to happen here. So we can see that Pope Francis is setting the stage for one world religion, um, where uh, he's trying to co-opt the Protestant churches. Uh, this is why when you look at media, and I always go to Fox because Fox is, I just call it the Jesuit news network because almost everybody on that channel is Catholic. And if you ever listen to them, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a Catholic love fest over there. They got their resonant, uh, priest that comes on and speaks all things Christians, which only means Catholic. There is nothing outside of Catholics, and that's what the Fox News Network puts forward. They roll out Huck, Huckster every now and then for a gee golly gosh moment of uh, gee golly gosh isms that uh, the old Huckster does, uh, being a former Baptist preacher who is a, a politician, a uh, former governor. So Huckster, they roll out as your token Protestant on that channel. Uh, maybe Lauren Green, who I don't know who I don't I honestly don't know what their her affiliation is or Kelly Wright's affiliation. The two black commentators on uh, uh, Fox, uh, I think Lauren Green heads up the religion. She's the religion reporter, which, you know, whatever that means. <laughs> I've seen her go to Israel and go to some of the holy sites. And then Kelly Wright sometimes adds something. But uh, it's a Catholic environment in the media uh, for the Jesuits. It's the Jesuits and their, their Jesuit trained uh, media. Uh, and then the other radio stations, uh, I mean, the other uh, TV networks, of course, they're just straight communist uh, garbage. Um, they're just straight humanists, straight communists, uh, philosophies. 
Uh, that's why I don't comment too much on them because they're they're just so easy to see that they're everything they say is indoctrination. Uh, that's why when this big huff about putting uh, news monitors into the newsrooms came about, uh, that uh, that uh, there wasn't uh, a response out of the CNN or any of these other news networks. They there was no response when Obama's uh, administration said these things. Uh, because uh, they're basically communists. They're all down with the uh, new world order, one world religion, one world uh, dictator. The, you know, they they. It's not hard for people to realize that the they what you, they call liberals or progressives are communists. Okay, and that these media outlets uh, they have no problem with the one world uh, government. And uh, all you gotta do is look up Walter Cronkite. Um, Re receiving, um, gee, what was his, uh, the something governance award for, uh, I forget what his name is. Um, but it was, he was receiving his award for, uh, a lifetime achievement in, in, uh, in news media. And, uh, he was saying, uh, by golly, now I can tell you what I truly believe. And I believe that we need, a uh, a one world government. And, you know, here's Walter Cronkite, uh, of course, they always believe that they 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 don't uh, espouse their beliefs in the public uh, in the public arena, but they do. And so um, I'm going to uh, take a let's see a quick uh, break here for a second and see why my dog is yelping at me. And I'll come right back. I want to cover uh, the two two uh, stories about the Son of God and uh, Noah. And I'll come right back in a second. Thank you. Let's see here. Got that one right there. Operation Lifesaver presents a 60-second lesson in common sense. Deodorant is not a shower. It's wrong to feed a baby salsa. Don't wear a kilt on a windy day. Never ask a bride why she's wearing white. Don't keep mouthwash next to the antifreeze. Heave on ho, not on heave. Don't sniff a green sausage. Close your mouth when you hang glide. Don't tap dance on the roof in an ice storm. Don't go swimming in leather pants. If you're in a parade, wave. Never eat a burrito before a road trip. Don't wear lace to a rodeo. One's a malt ball, one's a moth ball. Always walk with pie. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never leave a plant near the litter box. Don't buy sushi on sale. Flowers with thorns make lousy corsages. Don't put a knock-knock joke in a eulogy. Cherry chapstick doesn't taste as good as it smells. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Do I look fat? The answer is no. And most importantly, never, ever, ever forget your common sense around railroad tracks. A train can come from any direction, on any track, at any time. A message from Operation Lifesaver. Visit commonsenseuseit.com. Okay, I'm back, and I uh, hopefully my dog will let me finish the show without uh, constantly barking at me. Uh, as you have children and dogs and all that, you know that they will. They always uh, they always like to pop into your life right at the moments when they're not supposed to. But uh, that's uh, that is uh, what we have going on here is uh, my uh, lovely animals sitting here wanting more attention. So. Um, Moving into the ecumenical uh, push by Pope Francis and what we're seeing going on now is the mainstream media is uh, putting out through Hollywood two movies. And these two movies are The Son of God and the other one is called Noah. Okay, and it's like, all right, so we got the... The Shroud of Turin that they're floating out there for some reason. They got Pope Francis doing this major push. We got the uh, Kenneth Copeland, you know, we can all go home to Rome speech. And we got the uh, Hollywood releasing um, Christian messages. And why would they do that? You know, Hollywood is a satanic uh, cult to the core. And uh, um, I'm just going to have to... Uh, let me take a break here again. I got something going on. Just one second. Moving on. 
If you planned on following the presidential election in November, you might want to plug your ears. A big election spoiler is coming up. A minor software glitch at the Diebold Corporation today caused thousands of electronic voting machines to accidentally release the results of the presidential election months ahead of schedule. According to the group of military and corporate leaders that has chosen every American president since Eisenhower has chosen every American president since Eisenhower has chosen every American president since Eisenhower, Diebold's mistake marks the first time the nation's leader has been revealed prematurely. I don't even know if I can enjoy the sham election now that I know who's going to win. If you can't trust your shadowy overlords to keep a secret, what is the purpose, really, of voting in the public democracy? Uh, I'm fine with it. I mean, he was going to get my meaningless vote anyway. So. Despite the leak, all of the presidential candidates have so far said they'll continue their campaigns. Newt Gingrich isn't about to give up just because he lost the election. He'll give up when he's supposed to. Okay, I'm sorry for getting interrupted like this today. I tried to I tried to set aside time to uh, do a show and uh, do it out of the house, but every now and then you have a tendency to get uh, interrupted, uh, even though you set up everything possible, you know, and humanly possible to make sure that the dogs and people and everything uh, don't just pop in. And uh, I'm going to have to wrap up this show in about five minutes. Uh, I was going to go on for another half hour, but I was going to talk about a, uh, the, mo the movie Noah and the movie uh, Son of God, which um, uh, basically I want people to watch these movies. I'm not being anti these movies in the sense that uh, – uh, the reason I want you to be aware of these movies, uh, Son of God, is coming from the producers of the Bible miniseries by Roma Downey and Mark Burnett. Um, I believe Mark Burnett did reality TV shows like Survivor and things like that. And Roma Downey did Touched by an Angel. Uh, she basically has a Roman Catholic kind of background, kind of new agey with her. If you look into her education, uh, she, she wants to kind of went to kind of new agey kind of uh, education. And um, basically, this show is starting on the 28th in about three days. And what you're going to see in this movie, I think, that you want to watch for is you're going to watch for a non um, scriptural discussion that I believe that you're going to have a a kind of uh, paraphrased version of the Bible. I'm sure it'll be a nice movie. I'm just not sure it's going to be biblical, which I'm almost 100% certain it won't. And um, what I think you'll see here is that in ecumenism, they're trying to, with all the New Age Bibles, they're trying to make uh, Jesus just another... Uh, prophet or another uh, uh, messiah uh, just one of many so they they you they change verses like if you had in the king james version uh, that uh, 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 that jesus is the only begotten son of god uh, they'll change in the later versions to he's a one of the sons of god okay which is a watered down knocked down of jesus the the uh, authority of uh, Christ as the uh, Son of God, as the only begotten Son of God. Uh, so I think that's what you're going to see in these movies. It's going to be another one of these kind of a feel-good movies that uh, uh, I think you'll see God in the sense more of social justice, which is the Catholic Church is promoting more of a liberation theology, social justice, garbage uh, more, uh, they'll stay away from the more controversial, uh, statements to define them. They'll, uh, uh, basically they'll talk about, uh, they'll just, they, from what I've seen with the, uh, with the, what they're doing, uh, so they're, they're going to stay away from, um, a true biblical discussion. And from the write up on Noah, uh, the, out of the Catholic times, uh, that, uh, Basically, what they're talking about, the Catholic review of the Noah movie, is that it's going to be a very much of a uh, another one of these compromised kind of movies. But the Catholic reviewers are okay with it in the sense that it is the uh, – they're talking about how the flood story – 
you know, that uh, several sections in Genesis shouldn't be looked at as literally. And that Bible literalists like me or other few people that believe that you, when you talk about the Bible, you, you read the Bible and then you portray the characters according to the words that are in the Bible. They like to paraphrase and take license with all that. And that's what the Catholic uh, reviews of these movies is saying. Uh, I don't think... I think it's just going to be very subtle with Son of God. It's going to be very subtle. It's not. Uh, it's going to be a subtle kind of a, a more of a, of a watering. They, they calling it a love story. So you know, it's you're just going to have to watch it and uh, see what. The, it's more likely it's not what they do in the movie as much as what they don't do. That's usually how. The, uh, they change people's minds uh, regarding biblical things. They try to get them into uh, deal with biblical literacy by not putting forward uh, uh, views, uh, and not putting forth scripture. Where if you had a biblically sharp, uh, um, had a biblically sharp society, you would be aware of what's being eliminated. And what's being included uh, into the scripture, you would uh, you would have a better understanding of where is this coming from? Is this from uh, uh, biblical sources or Gnostic sources or just traditions or extra biblical passages? Um, so I think it'll be a entertaining movie that a lot of people will like. I just don't think I think it'll be completely ecumenical and basically. Uh, uh, more new agey kind of a Jesus, and it, more of it's in, it's all good. I, because I've seen the the reviews for it, uh, they have uh, uh, Rick Warren and and uh, Osteen both supporting this movie, and some other Catholics or whatever. So it's kind of an ecumenical movie about Jesus. And uh, since Osteen and Warren and all these people put forward it, it's the, it's all good philosophy. Uh, you know, the Freemason philosophy. That's exactly what I think you'll see in this movie. The The movie with Noah is interesting because most of the actors in this movie are definitely do mo most of the Illuminati movies. Uh, you got Russell Crowe. Uh, you got Emma Watson. I think you got Anthony um, uh, Hopkins in there. And uh, I think it's a takeoff on a lot of the Book of Enoch as far as uh, uh, some of the lines. Um, I think you're going to see a very, I think in a way it's going to be more of a movie of, for the Illuminati in the sense that they want to have their, this, this end time tribulation period is their Noah period where they're going to go through the tribulation. So this is more of the as above, so below kind of thing. I think it's them acting out the the that they're going to survive the tribulation and come out on the other side, and they're going to survive and and bring forth the new world in their image. So I think this Noah movie is much more of a, a manufactured movie for the Illuminati followers uh, to uh, reenact the biblical Noah uh, movie. Uh, so there, this is how they viewing, how they're going to go through the tribulation. So that's generally where I wanted to go with those movies. I wanted to go in more depth with them with, uh, di direct quotes and stuff like that. But with, you know, animals and people, sometimes they change your directions from what you had planned. Uh, but, um, I appreciate your time today listening. Uh, I hope that you, I uh, just realized that uh, this ecumenical one world, a part of the three-tier system of the New World Order, is a Luciferian-inspired doctrine, uh, that these Christians or so-called Christian movies are going to be watered down in such a way that they fit with a ecumenical message. Uh, they, will not, they will not go to the strictly biblical or a strictly Christ uh referenced uh verses because uh they would see that as divisive and the uh, last thing that these protestant pastors like osteen and such uh, want to do is have anything that sounds devices divisive they just want all feel good ear tickling um ecumenical you know kumbaya moments with uh you know the jesuit pope uh so i'm glad that you all uh came in today uh, I hopefully you got something out of today's uh, um, show. 
uh, we're facing uh, a serious onrush of uh, ecumenical um, uh, push and um, I definitely uh, thank you for supporting me and uh, all the nice feedback I get and I hope you have a great day and I'm going to sign off right now. freedomtalkradio.co.uk This is the most diverse, most amazing, one of the funniest radio stations you could ever listen to on the internet. I've heard so much stuff from the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, the politics, the non-politics, the schmalitics, whatever you want to call them. It's great.